decades. I'm not sure if he's been doing that for decades, but today we finally connected, and I now know why. Kendall Rogers, preeminent college baseball writer, D1Baseball.com, among others as well, joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio. So when I called you the 39 times I've done that the last couple of years, it always looked like I was some sort of car warranty guy. <laughs> yeah, so for whatever reason, when people call me, like 95% of the time it comes in as like, wireless caller and like 95 percent of the time it's like i think it said this time it said wireless caller from my lorena and i'm sitting there like boy this doesn't look legit at all but uh, you know i answered i'm glad i did well i i am as well and kendall thank you very much for being a part of the show and uh, again kendall does an incredible job covering college baseball and with us on this the week before a uh, week of that the college world series will start in omaha but we'd like sure. to start with baylor first Obviously, uh, looking for a replacement for Steve Rodriguez, who replaced Steve Smith before him. What are you hearing right now that you can share with us on the Baylor search? Because we also know Mac Rhodes has uh, sometimes been able to find somebody that never was even on the radar. Yeah, no doubt. I, I had no doubt they've done a pretty exhaustive search. I mean, some of the names I've heard, obviously, they're looking in the right places, whether it's, you know, Lane Burroughs at Louisiana Tech, certainly a guy that's, you know, in the mix. I think you look at, across the country, you know, Jake Gotra is a guy that I know has had interest in the Baylor job. I'm not so sure. You know, I, I think he's going to stay put at Mississippi State just because I think he has his eye, his eye on an SEC job. But, uh, you know, I think they're looking at the right guys. You know, Dan Fitzgerald at LSU is a guy that stands out right now. The thing about Dan is, you know, he's a Dallas Baptist and was one of the architects of, you know, Dallas Baptist and it's, it's rise in college baseball the last couple of decades. You know, he's, he was, you know, Dan Heaper's right-hand man. And uh, I think, you know, Fitzgerald will be an excellent hire if, if that's the guy that would be. Well, obviously, you know, the, the elephant in the room is, you know, Mitch Thompson. You know, he's a guy that, you know, was an excellent recruiter under Steve Smith. It was a huge part of what, you know, Baylor did under Smitty. And, you know, he's a guy that's certainly uh, in the mix as well. And I would keep an eye on a, on a guy like Rob Vaughn in Maryland. I mean, if you look at Rob, you know, he's a Corpus Christi native. Uh, he kind of gnashed his teeth as an assistant at Kansas State. Um, you know, he played college baseball at Kansas State. You look at the job he's done in Maryland. The thing that the thing that I keep going back to when it comes to Maryland, Smokey, is when you look at the hires that Maryland has made as an athletic department over the years in baseball. You know, you look at Eric Backage. You know, they hired him. Well, he ends up being a national runner up in Michigan. Probably going to be the next head guy, at Clemson. Uh, you look at John Sheff. They hired him. He went on to Virginia Tech, where he just led the Hokies to a super regional host. And now, you know, now they have Rob Bond. So, I mean. Conventional wisdom, looking at those hires, would suggest, hey, Maryland knows what the heck they're doing. And any any time you hire one of their baseball coaches, you're probably your hit rate, and that's probably pretty good. So, I mean, those are the names I'm kind of hearing right now. I mean, I would I would probably keep a close eye on the, the Mitch, you know, Fitz, Fitz and uh, Rob Vaughn names for for now. And, and honestly, if, if BU and Macro decided to go that way, uh, I feel really good about either one of those hires. I think if you look at Mitch and the job that you know he did as the head coach, it's, it's one thing to recruit really well as an assistant level, but you know he went to McLennan, led him to the national championship. He's been an excellent head coach there. Uh, Dan, you know, is at LSU now. Has had chances to take head coaching jobs in the past, just hasn't done it. Hasn't found the right fit. Obviously, Baylor sounds like it's the right fit for him. Uh, and then you look at Rob Vaughn. I mean, the thing about him that's interesting is, you know, they you know they they had an, just an okay year a couple of years ago but they make that big surge this year. He's just one of those guys that's a very cerebral coach, but yet he's very in tune with kind of the younger player. He's hard-nosed. He knows what it takes to land a program like Baylor that, frankly, let's be real honest, I mean, that, that program needs a little spice. I mean, they need a little bit of spice to, to catch up with the Texas, the Texas A&M, and the TCUs of the world. Kendall, how much uh, when it comes to uh, equivalency sports – potentially and probably getting full scholarships for what they've been asking for for a long, long time. Changes coaching searches around the country because schools will have the option to not do that. Now, I would assume that most of them, if they want to remain competitive, will. But how does that change things going forward? It's massive. I think if you're a school like Baylor, you have a lot more to sell uh, than you did before. Because, you know, the, the fact of the matter is with BU is compared to some other schools uh, around the country and around the region – they didn't quite have the financial aid to help. And it, that's not to say it's, you know, Mac Rhodes' fault. It's not the president's office's fault. It's just kind of the reality of the situation. And, you know, with the transformation committee, when they meet in the fall, all indications are that the transforma transformation committee will make it where conferences are making their own scholarship rules. And they're going to make it to where teams can hire as many assistant coaches as they want. So what happens is these programs that have, you know, an advantage over Baylor from a scholarship standpoint – all of a sudden, it doesn't matter anymore because they're all playing by the same rules and the same regulations. So, 
I think for a program like Baylor, it allows you to really sell that program because all of a sudden it's like, hey, you know what? We might not be in the best you know, financial aid position right now, but guess what? And like it probably two years, it's not going to matter anyway. Kendall, uh, before we move on to the College World Series, uh, you know, one more thing on Baylor. When it came to Steve Rodriguez and his tenure, what did you kind of feel was the – like you've mentioned, they need some juice right now, and and they definitely were running out of that there at the end. But what do you think was ultimately the the issues that arose for the eventual departure between Rodriguez and Baylor? It is really weird because I, I you know number one I thought that was a really good hire when they made it. Obviously you know you know Steve got to them some regionals. They were always contenders, but you know it's just one of those deals where they never just kind of got over the hump. And the problem you run, run into, and it's not necessarily Steve's fault or anybody else's, the problem you run into is people. You know, and it's not to say Baylor shouldn't expect more. They absolutely should. But, you know, people start to get a little impatient with, like, this rebuilding process when, you know, TCU's going to Omaha. You know, you've got a and in Texas and Omaha this year. Texas Tech, of all places, you know, we all remember when those guys would have, would have like, prayed and had their last right be just to get to Omaha. Uh, Texas Tech gets to Omaha every other year. So it's just, you know, it's one of those deals where, you know, Baylor is no longer a place or, or frankly, any other job in the state, whether it's U of H or whatever, it's no longer a place where you can just show up and you get, you know, seven years to kind of turn them into an Omaha contender. I'm not saying you've got to do it in two or three, but the fact of the matter is when you look at Baylor, that was not a program, especially after this year, losing some guys that you looked at next year and went, you know what? I think they're going to contend for the conference championship. But I think if you're Mac Rhodes, he's probably honest with himself about that and made the decision. All right, Kendall, thanks for all that insight on the Baylor coaching search again. Uh, would not be surprised at the names you brought up. Uh, some of them have been uh, filtered into our Sikkim 365 premium section as well. No doubt. Um, I, I guarantee you Brian's on it. Yeah, no, <laughs> he, he's – in fact, he posted something earlier today. So glad we had you on today as well. What a field in Omaha, the, the College Baseball World Series. Four SEC teams, actually maybe six if you count Texas yeah. and Oklahoma – three former Southwest Conference rivals, and then, of course, yeah. you have Notre Dame and Stanford in the mix as well. Is this How intriguing is this field, in your opinion? I think it's awesome because the thing about this field is when you look at all the teams in it, you're not looking at any specific team and going, you know what, I think they've got a huge, huge advantage. I think there's a great chance they win this thing. You know, if Tennessee was in it, you're looking at it as, you know what, I think Tennessee's got a huge advantage. But, you know, when you look at this field, you look on one side of the bracket with Texas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma and Notre Dame, you know, Texas is playing really well right now. Uh, Oklahoma and A&M are sizzling high. But then you've got Notre Dame, who knocked off Tennessee. They've got, you know, what, like 18 fresh or, excuse me, seniors on their team. Uh, you know, they feel like they're playing with house money right now. So they're playing well. Then you look at the other bracket, you've got Stanford, who's the number two national seed, got to Omaha last year. You know, Ole Miss and Arkansas are playing at a really high level. Uh, and, and so, I, you know, I think when you look at the field overall, I mean, it's just a south. Then you, then you have Auburn. I'm sorry, I didn't mention them. But, you know, Butch Thompson, you know, has him back in Omaha for the second time in three years. So it's still – it's a it's teams with a lot of experience. And, frankly, uh, I had somebody ask me for a prediction earlier. I don't really have one yet. Like, honest honest truth, like I have no idea who I think is going to win this thing. Kendall, uh, I do have to, as a Florida State grad and someone who has uh, long suffered wanting a College World Series with being <laughs> so close uh, so, so many times, uh, with Mike Martin Sr., Mike Martin Jr. has been let go and – um, staying out of the complex, you know, web that was kind of that situation there with a new athletic director. Where do you think they will go? Is it Link, Jared, or Bus for them right now? It absolutely is, and I would be very, very shocked if it's not Link, Jared. I think, you know, Florida State. I was talking to somebody close to their search the other day, and they're like, "Oh, we're, you know, we're kind of on hold right now. They're on hold because they're just waiting for Link, Jared." And so, I would be absolutely floored if Link, Jared's not the head coach of Florida State. He played there. Uh, he coached under Mike Martin Sr. He loves Florida State. And the fact of the matter is, if you're Link and you look at Notre Dame's situation, you're looking at a situation to where, you know what, I'll lose like 18 guys this year. Like, this is as good as it's going to get. And I think Link realizes that, and I think he'll go to Florida State. And I think, honestly, he'll go to Florida State and absolutely kill it, and he'll lead them to the first national championship. Oh, Kendall. I mean, I just don't. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I mean, it just <laughs> the so idea of it. I mean, I mean I, you got to. Damn, my, my freshman year was the year was, was 1990. I guess it would have been 99 that year where they lost to Miami uh, late yeah. in that game. And it's like since then, like there's been a hole in my heart <laughs> about uh, it. So. There is no place in it. Well, uh, Arkansas and Florida State are the two places that deserve a national championship more than anybody. Yeah. Uh. 
Best guest ever. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Kendall, how much have your mentions been filled with Tennessee references, either from Tennessee fans or from opposing fans over the last, uh, I don't know, three, four days? Uh, apparently, people don't like Tennessee. And, you know, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I don't mind. I, I kind of go to the, you know, I, I've covered these kids for a few years. And I, you know, like they're off the field persona doesn't really meet who they are on the field. So, I mean, I feel bad for them. But, you know, mm-hmm. the thing about it is, when you play like that and you play loud, you play boisterous, you're, you're, you're mouthy, like you're going to create enemies. And so I think it's one of those things, if you're Tony Vitello, you're kind of telling your team, like, hey, under no circumstances are you on social media right now because it's not pretty. And you can't really blame people for going after them after some of the anti they pulled. Uh, Kendall Rogers, I just now realized you're from Lufkin. Is that correct? I am. I, that, uh, yeah, that, that, born and raised in Lufkin. I remember back in the day when you were uh, – Patrol in East Texas. Back in the day. That's, <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, that's a long, long time ago. In fact, we lived there for a little bit, too. Plus, I did report from Lufkin and Nacogdoches. That's a baseball town. That's a passionate baseball town. So, is that where it got in your blood? Yeah, a little bit. So, I, I was born and raised going to – so, my, my, my dad went to A&M. And so, I was born and raised going to, you know, games at the old Farrell Field. Uh, mm-hmm. Baylor Park, slightly better than the old Farrell Field. But, uh, you know, I remember going to games there. Dish Falk, you know, Olsen Field back in the day at A&M, and I just kind of fell in love with college baseball. So when I was a junior or senior in high school back uh, in the late 90s, I'm kind of thinking, you know what, there's a huge void in college baseball. And one thing just kind of led to another, and I've now been doing this for 20, what, 25 years now? So I, I love it. But, yeah, how about, you know, speaking of old Lufkin days, Fred Oliver, remember that name? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, they, that, so, was a, that was a great, great city for high school baseball and the passion, plus it's a great connection as well in many ways to A&M. So when you look, Texas has now been the 38 of 75 College World Series. We know others have got a great history as well. What they did at East Carolina uh, didn't surprise me, even though they were on the ropes in that game too. But it's like East Carolina might, the jungle might have released a little bit too much happy, happy uh, a little bit early, huh? Well, they might have had some good stuff that last game because uh, I don't know <laughs> the if saw some of the crowd shots, but they were not feeling any pain. And um, you know, I give Texas a lot of credit. You know, they they were down and out in that second game. It looks like they're going to lose. And what happens? Texas turns on the Jets. They come back and win that game. And you know, Tristan Stevens threw the the final game for Texas. And you know, that was his third outing in that weekend. And frankly, his previous two outings that weekend weren't very good. And so he went out there and threw really well for him and got him the win. You know, that, that to me is kind of an X factor for the Horns going into the World Series is the fact that he threw really well in Greenville. If he throws really well in Omaha, I could see Texas going on a run in that bracket. Well, they open up with Notre Dame. They're red hot. They're an experienced team, A&M and Oklahoma, on the other side yeah. of that bracket. Who knows? We might – I mean, there's if Texas wins their game with Notre Dame, right, no matter what, it's against a rival? It absolutely is. So, I mean, imagine if you have Texas and A&M playing for a, bra- for a bracket championship to play for the national title. There will not be much love lost in the stands for that one. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> be at a hell all. of a crowd, though. Yeah, it'd be yeah. absolutely a great no crowd. Doubt. And, then, of course, Oklahoma beat them in the uh, Big 12 tournament as well. Kendall, uh, thank you very much for your time. Great to you have it, you guys. on the show, man. Anytime. Save you my got name it, buddy. now into the <laughs> number and not unknown anymore. I appreciate that. Thank yeah, when, when Baylor hires a coach, let's talk again. Yes. I, I, think, I think we might be talking to you again pretty soon. Okay, right. we will. Thank you very much. Bye, Thanks for that offer. Uh, again, Kendall Rogers, D1Baseball.com. He and others do a great job. It's a subscription site. But if you're a college baseball fan, like, for example, some that are trying to figure out some of the coaching searches, including Baylor, our Brian Etheridge is unbelievable when it comes to what he's got up there today on the premium section as well as they start to count down whenever Baylor and Mac Rhodes make a decision on who replaces Steve Rodriguez. Yeah, I 